Good afternoon, everyone. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to another fasting service. It is indeed my pleasure to come to you today with the word of Almighty God. Amen, somebody. It is indeed an absolute honor to come to you today. God has been good and he continues to be faithful and you know, he's just an amazing God, and I'm sure, you know, we would never want to find ourselves anywhere else but in the presence of Almighty God. Amen, somebody. In his presence. Amen. In his presence, there's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen, somebody. Let me say welcome, 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 one and all. Welcome. Amen, somebody. God has given me a word, and I do hope that, you know, everyone will just join me today for this word. Amen, somebody. In spite of wherever you are joining me from, I appreciate you. Happy that you can join me today. Amen. I praise God for you. I thank God for you. Amen. And I thank you for your prayers also. Amen, somebody. I can't, I wouldn't be here without you all. So I thank God for you. But today I have a topic, simply put, the process. You know, some of us don't like to hear this word, process. Amen, somebody. And the meaning of process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. And every day of our lives, we go through one process or the other. Amen, somebody. Amen. We don't achieve something, you know, just like that out of the blue. We must go through the process first before we achieve a particular goal. Amen. Your process may be different from mine. Nonetheless, it is still a process. Amen. Today, I want to look at the life of Joseph and the process that he went through. Amen, somebody. I know you may be going through your process out there. I'm going through my process, amen. But in the hand, amen, somebody, God will be glorified. God will be praised. Amen, somebody. Amen, the process. And I want you to follow with me because I feel as if I'm going to be doing a little bit of teaching and going from scripture to scripture as we follow the process of Joseph. Amen, somebody. Invite your friends and families and co-workers and neighbors to come online. Amen. And to hear the word of God, the process. Now, let me establish that there is no position without a process. If you're going to become a manager in your company, you, you have to go through a process. Amen. You don't just become the manager overnight. Amen, somebody. Either you're going to further your studies or you're in the workplace a long time so you come to know the business. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so too in Christendom, we must go through the process. Amen. When God is going to take us to another level, there is a process. Amen, somebody. When God is going to promote us, there is a process. Amen, somebody. And oftentimes when the process comes, it includes, it involves a lot of pain. Amen, somebody. When you're going through a process, it's not a comfortable place. Now we bite in food, and before it becomes corned beef, amen, somebody, it was just beef, and then it turned minced beef, and then it's processed into something else, amen, somebody. Now we too, when we come into a relationship with God, we are going to be processed, whether we like it or not, amen, somebody. Amen. And so I went to the book of Genesis. I want you to follow me. Genesis 37. Amen. And we're going to look at when Joseph's process started. Amen. Follow with me today, somebody. I need you all here with me. When Joseph's process started. Started, And I believe that a lot of us watching today or listening today, after hearing this message, you will understand why you're going through what you're going through and you won't see your process as punishment. 
Amen. But you will seek as a ladder to climb to the next level. You will understand why you are being persecuted, why you are being criticized, why you are being ostracized, come on, why you are being rejected. Amen, somebody. You will understand at the end of this message today. Now, Genesis 37, verse 5 to 9 says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Now, now, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably <laughs> unto him. And Joseph, oh sorry, I started from the top, sorry about that. And Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood up right. And behold, your sheaves were stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? Amen. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Let me stop there a little bit. Amen. So the first, Joseph's process began with his dreams. I don't know what your dream is. Come on, somebody. But it seems as if the enemy may have gotten a wind of what your dream is. And the devil is mad. Amen. You may say, what are you talking about, prophetess? Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Now, Joseph got two dreams. And he shared it with his brethren, his brothers, blood brothers, and he shared it with his father. And what they made of the dream, they did not like. Now, hatred formed in their hearts. The brothers could not accept the fact that God would take Joseph to a place where they will bow in his presence. Now, God knows the future. Joseph nor his brothers could see where God was about to take Joseph. Come on, somebody. Likewise to them, you can't see where God is about to take you. Amen. And all around you, all hell is breaking loose. And you cannot understand it because all you did was get an idea about something. And so now it is creating problems. There's more to come. Now, first, Joseph's process began with his dream. And we saw that in what we just read. Amen, somebody. There are times in your life where you just get an idea and you share it with somebody or a group of people. You said, this is what I would like to do. And after sharing that idea with those people, you come to realize that you start getting some cold shoulders or you start getting some attitude. Come on, can anybody out there identify with what I am talking about? Amen. You start getting, you know, the avoiding thing and, oh, you know, it's nothing. I'm just busy. Now, I want us to take the time out to go to number two, the pit experience. And that now is the same Genesis 37 verse 4. And this is where verse 30, 24 rather. And you will now begin to realize how much Joseph's brother hated him. His father still loved him, but he pondered it in his mind. But the brothers hated Joseph. I want you to follow me. So we're still in Genesis 37, and we're going to verse 24. Now, and it says, and they took him and cast him into a pit 
and the pit was empty and there was no water in it lord god almighty meaning come on now in essence they took him to a barren place they took him to a dry place so even if he was thirsty he couldn't even have something to drink and if the pit was dry very well the place could be very hot come on now now joseph's father sent him down to bring food to his brothers not strangers are you following me today we're talking Talking about the process and now Joseph took the food he was a happy child happy about his dream and happy about life come on some of you are there you're happy about serving God you're happy about your new promotion you're happy about getting married you're happy about your new baby you're happy about the things that's happening in your life but the first thing you did was to share your dream with the enemy Lord God Almighty but guess what it's still a part of the process come Come on now and so they looked ahead and they saw Joseph and they said oh the dream are coming then Joseph had on the coat that his father made him his coat of many colors you may have a coat it may not be a literal coat it can be your anointing it can be your house it can be your children it can be your possession whatever it is that God has blessed you with and the enemy is not pleased Hallelujah. And so they plotted to kill Joseph. Come on now, somebody. But there were one brother who said, no, 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 no. Don't kill him. He's still our flesh and blood. Put him in the pit. I don't know who is putting you in a pit today, but I just want you to see it as a part of the process. Oh, God Almighty, endure your pit-like situation today. It is all about the process to bring you into that which God is taking you into. Come on, somebody, worship God with me. I'm getting somewhere because it's eating up some more. Now the third part of Joseph's process was to be sold as a slave. Mighty God. Now we go to Genesis 37 again, but we're going down to verse 28. Amen, somebody. And it says, Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lift up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph unto Egypt. Come on now, no, somebody. So Joseph's process was getting harder. A young boy who was enjoying his life meant no harm to anyone. He was doing all the right things, I would believe. Come on now, somebody. And so Joseph is there, just happy about the vision that God gave him, just happy to serve his brothers and love them. Now we find this young child who maybe have never left home being sold as a slave. My God, what a turn of event. Come on, somebody. Anybody out there experienced it, experiencing such a process where one moment you are quite fine. Amen. And you have all the friends in the world. And the next moment, everybody turn an enemy and you're saying to yourself, my God, what have I done? Why this is happening to me? Amen. Somebody, thank you for praying for me because I believe so fire is going to be stirred up uh, with this message. Come on now somebody. Joseph did no one any wrong but all of a sudden come on somebody because he shared his dream oh God almighty he was placed in a pit he was ate and placed in a pit and now he was sold as a slave. An innocent child who meant no harm to anyone. Let me remind you about today's topic again, the process. Joseph could not understand the process. He didn't know what was happening. Can you just imagine how Joseph felt as a child away from the care of his father who loved him so much, the comfort of his 
home. Come on, now somebody, maybe you're out there. Maybe you lost your car. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you lost a job. Come on, somebody, you can't understand how the deal, you believe that the deal was closed and then you just lost everything. Come on, somebody. But I want to encourage you today that it's a part of the process and you will soon understand why there must be a process amen somebody i want you to understand today that there is no position without a process and pain is a part of the process let me say that again pain is a part of the process even though none of us want the pain Amen. Somebody, none of us want to go through any pain at all. We love our children, but when it comes, uh, amen, somebody to childbirth, oh my God, most of us women fear it because it entails a lot of pain. But after all that pain, when you look at your bundle of joy, you forget at times about the pain and you say, thank you, Jesus. Amen, somebody, this is yours. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. So let us look at our pain today. Amen, somebody. Not as punishment, but as a part of the process. Come on, somebody. Your pain is not, pun your process is not punishment. Amen. It's just a process. It's just to get you where God wants you. Amen, somebody. Now, we're going to go again when Joseph was sold to Potiphar. And we go to verse 36 of Genesis 37. Amen. And the Midianites and Ishmaelites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, and the captain and chief executor of the royal guard. Now we look again. Joseph is now sold to a general in Egypt. He was still a slave. But when we read the story carefully, we realize that Joseph found favor in Potiphar's house. Potiphar made Joseph in charge of his household. And Potiphar said to him, the only thing I don't give you charge of is my wife. Amen, somebody. Now, listen to me. The enemy see everything that God has placed you in charge of. And the enemy is going to try to touch it. All as a part of the process. Somebody better worship God with me today. Amen. Somebody. The enemy saw that even though Joseph had a dream and was hated for it. He was placed in a pit and he survived the pit. Come on. He was sold. Come on now. And he survived that. He was sold a second time. To Potiphar. But then God blessed him. I want to tell you somebody, God is still blessing you in your process. Amen. Your process is not to kill you. Oh God Almighty, come on somebody. Your process is to elevate you. Your process is to promote you. Amen somebody. Your process is not to kill you. So Joseph now, he was in Potiphar's house. And, uh, you know, Joseph getting comfortable. And God said, you know what? Your process is not ended, son. <laughs> it's going to get eaten up in here. Because your destination is not as a slave in Potiphar's house. I wonder if you're understanding me today. Your, your position, amen, your destiny is not where you are today. Oh, God, you may be getting handouts right now, but that is not where God wants you. Oh, God Almighty, you may be in the valley right now. Why? you may be in the pit but God is saying today that is not where I am going to amen somebody destined you to be I'm just get 
getting ready, amen, to elevate you. It's just a part of uh, the process. So don't get too comfortable yet. Oh, God Almighty, where you are, I'm going to turn up the heat some more. And so, it brings me to my fifth point. When Joseph was accused. Now we see where we skip all of Genesis 38. And we go over to Genesis 39 verse 12 through 15. Follow with me. Amen somebody. I'm telling you about the process. But let me tell you that the devil can't kill purpose. Even though you're going through your process. The devil can't kill you. Amen somebody. It is what God says will happen in your life. That is what is going to happen somebody. The process may be long. And the process may be hard. But trust God through it all. Amen. A lot of us love to say, God, why me? Why me, Lord? Why am I going through all of this? But trust God in the process. Remember, the process is not to kill you. Amen, somebody. The process, oh God Almighty, is going to bring you out. And you're going to come out as pure gold. Amen, somebody. Now let's go to when Joseph was accused. Genesis 39, 12 through 15. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he had brought a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Let me tell you something. When you're going through the process, the enemy is going to accuse you. God knows you're not guilty. You know you're not guilty. Even the enemy knows you're not guilty. But the enemy is still going to accuse you. He is the accuser of the brethren. Come on somebody. Amen. He is the father of all lies. Amen. Somebody is a liar from the beginning and he's still a liar today and he will continue to be a liar. The accuser accused Joseph. Now the young man had to run for his life. He ran because he didn't want to mess up his relationship with God. He didn't want to take advantage of his boss wife. Yet because he did not do the wrong thing. <laughs> he was accused. Come on somebody. I don't know who is accusing you. But the fact that you know the truth. The Bible says that you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. You don't need to be longing up your face. Amen somebody. And trying to prove a point. When you know the truth. And God knows the truth. And the very enemy that is accusing you. Knows the truth as well. But it's a part of the process somebody. Amen. The enemy wants us to doubt and fear. Indeed. Amen somebody. But we are not going to do that in this season. Amen. Amen. And so Joseph after taking care of his boss's household. Potiphar's household. The enemy said okay. Okay I'm coming I you right now. I'm coming at you again. And this time what a lie that was told and Joseph. Oh God Almighty he could not have escaped prison. And maybe some of us would say my God couldn't God give Joseph a break? Hello? How many of us are saying God give me a break? Lord I pay my tithes. Oh God I'm, I'm in church every Sunday or every Saturday. Lord I'm on the choir. I fast and pray. 
But Lord, at the same, when I go to church, you don't like me. When I go to work, God the boss give everybody a raise of pay, but he not give me none Jesus. Can I talk to us? Lord, God, I feel as if I don't belong. Lord, I don't know what to do. I feel as if I can't make it. Lord, I've been trying to get pregnant for 10, 15, 20 years, God, and I'm not conceiving, God. What is happening? Oh, God, I just lost my mother. Now I lost my father. Then I lose a child. Then I lose a uncle. Then I lose a aunt. Then I lose a cousin. Then I lose a sister. Then I lose a brother. Oh, God, I believe I deserve a break. But let me tell you something today that the battle may be hot and the conflict sore. Amen. Somebody, the devil is a liar today. Amen. Amen, somebody. But hold on to Jesus. Amen. Take him at his words. And he will carry you through today. Amen, somebody. He will indeed carry you through. Amen, somebody. So here is Joseph who did nothing wrong. He escaped the hatred of his brother. Amen, somebody. He went through the pit, a dry place. He endured being sold. And now here is Joseph. Amen. Somebody being accused of something that he did not do. Or he didn't even have the intention of doing it. Can anybody out there identify what I'm talking about? But I just want to remind you that it's a part of the process. Amen, somebody. Because you see, we're getting closer. Listen to me. The more the E turn up on you, it's closer to your position or your promotion. Amen, somebody. The more the heat get turned up, you know that you're coming closer to where God is going to take you. You're getting closer to greatness. Come on, somebody. You're coming closer, my God, to walk into that which God has called you to walk. Amen, somebody. Again, I said the process is not punishment. It's just to bring you into your position. Amen, somebody. And you're going to come out pure gold today. Amen. And this bring me to Genesis 39, verse 20. Joseph was thrown into prison. Come on, somebody. Lord God, and it says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. How many of you out there feel like you're in prison today? How many of you feel as if there's no way you can get out of the situation that you are in? You look up and there is trouble. You look down and there is trouble. You look to the left and you look to the right and there is no way out. Amen. You can't see the way out at all. And instead of things getting, oh Lord God Almighty, any better for you, it seemed to be getting Getting worse. You don't have the money to pay your rent. And just as you started saving up to pay that, they cut off your light. And just when you think you want to deal with your light bill, there comes the water bill. School fees to be paid. But let me tell somebody today, the process, amen, is not easy. And the process may be rigid and rugged and hard. Amen, somebody. But the process is to bring you into greatness. The process is to bring you to your purpose. Your process is to bring you into your promotion. Your process is to bring you into the call and the purpose of Almighty God. Your process, do not see it as punishment, but see it as a stepping stone to get you to where God wants you. So here is Joseph in prison. And now this is when God says, I'm going to step in. Come on, somebody. God is about to step into your process. 
God is getting ready to fine tune every little detail concerning you. Amen. And I, come on somebody, the tears that you have been crying, they are not in vain. The sleepless nights, they are not in vain. The lies that have been told on you, they are not in vain. Oh God, the tongues, the negative tongues, oh God Almighty, that has been wagging about you and criticizing in you, who is saying you're crazy when you give them a prophecy? Oh God Almighty, when you're in the room, when you're speaking from the from the throne of God, and people say, Oh, you know, that is folly. Come on, somebody, just keep on doing what God has called you to do because the process will soon come to an end. It makes no, no sense either. You run from your process, amen. Somebody. Amen. Because we all must go through the process. Amen. The process is to make you stronger. Some of us, without the process, we wouldn't know that we could do a 21 day fast. We wouldn't know that we could learn to trust God so much. We wouldn't know what it is like. Amen, somebody just to lie in the presence of God. Amen, for days. Because you don't know where else to go but at the foot of Jesus. Come on, somebody, you don't know where else to run to. Because if you run to the rock, the rock might set you, I need a hiding place. Come on, somebody, there's no friend at this point in time. It's a lonely place at times when you're going through the process. Because there are those who will say to you, Amen. Hey, must be something wrong that you have done while you are going through so much but Joseph did nothing wrong come on somebody but he had to get to that place where God wanted him to Joseph did nothing wrong he was just being happy he didn't even know the danger in sharing his dream some of us don't even know the danger in trusting some people around us. And I've come to realize, I used to hear it first, that the life of a prophet is a lonely one. But let me tell you something, it gets even more lonelier when the process starts. Because when the process starts, there is no one around. There's no backup at times <clears throat> when the process starts and you feel as if God has abandoned you. Amen. I guess this is how Jesus felt on the cross when he said, My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? A lot of us today feel as if God has forsaken us. But no, he has not forsaken us. He is busy working it out for our good. But it's just that we are limited to here and now. And we can't see what God is up to. But come on somebody, I can tell you that oh God, he is up to something awesome. He is up to something amazing. He is up to something great. We just can't fathom it at the moment but today I feel like when Elijah was up on Mount Carmel and he said I hear the sound of rain come on somebody he didn't see the rain but he heard it in the realm of the spirit somebody you may not see greatness right now all you can see is the process but come on now somebody oh God you need to tap in the realm of the spirit. Oh God, and begin to rejoice in your process because your process is not there to kill you. It is there to bring you out. You may say, okay, prophetess, you know, you kind of lose my right there. Really? And I'm, I'm going to say something to you. In prison, Joseph found favor with the prison guard. <laughs> so when Joseph should be down there in depression. Let me tell you something, people of God. This is when the purpose of God is on your life and the mark of God is upon your life. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. God is going to bless you right there. 
Amen. And so Joseph was blessed in prison. Who would have thought that? Oh, amen, somebody. Now, right in prison, in Genesis 40, verse 12, amen, somebody, Joseph interprets dreams. Joseph is right where it all began, dreams. Come on, somebody. Genesis 40, verse 12. And Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. And we know the story where Joseph, amen, he interpreted the baker's dream and the bearer's dream, meaning the butler's dream. Amen. The baker was killed and by Pharaoh in three days. And the bearer was restored to his position to serve in Pharaoh. Now... Things are turning around because that which God had placed in Joseph from the earlier days when he gave him the dreams. Come on, somebody. Now God has also given, given him the gift of interpretation in the midst of the enemies. Come, hello. Joseph was in prison. But he began to do the work of God right there in the prison, somebody. I want to tell somebody, right in your prison-like situation, God is going to use you and promote you. And the devil can't stop you. It's a part of the process. All you need to do is to hold up your end of the bargain. Amen. So Joseph interpreted the dreams. And lo and behold, in the three days, one was hanged, birds ate his flesh. The other was restored to his rightful position. I want to tell some of you listening to, to me today, you're about to be restored to your rightful position. Be it in your family, be it at work, be it at church, be it in your community. But God is getting ready to turn your situation around as right now we see where Joseph is going through his process. And in the least likely place, amen, God is using him. Amen, somebody. But then after Joseph found favor in the, in, the, in the prison guard and Joseph interpreted the dream, Joseph just had one request, you know. He said, remember me to the cupbearer. You know, put in a good word for me. Amen, somebody. But guess what? It couldn't put in the good word for Joseph, you know, because God knew that there was a, per, a, a perfect time. Amen, somebody. There's a time, a set time to bring you out of your process. There is a set time to bring you into your rightful position. Amen, somebody. Come on now. There is a set time. To bring you into your blessing. There is a set time for the process. Amen. If the process is the last 50 years, you cannot come out of the process in 25 years. Can I tell us something? If you're going to be in the process for six months, you must remain in the process for that time. Because when God brings you out, it will be perfect timing. Now, Joseph was forgotten. Genesis 40, verse 23 says, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Lord Jesus, there are some people you expect to remember you when they come in a dear blessing, you know. Oh, God Almighty. There are some people you help along the way. I guess when you fall in a little need and want, you're not going to see those people. Can I talk to us? Amen, somebody. Lord God, God bless the few who return and bless. Amen, somebody. But the Bible said the chief butler did not remember Joseph. 
but forgot him. Amen. You may feel forgotten today, but you know what? The good thing is that God will not forget you. Amen. Somebody, the song said, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. Even though the chief butler forgot Joseph, God knew Joseph's name. Come on, somebody. You are not forgotten. Because sometimes who you are looking to bless you, they will not bless you. But God will raise up somebody else. You they don't even have to know you to bless you. Amen. So your process is not to kill you. Your process is to bring you out into greatness. You don't have to see the greatness. Just believe the promises of God. Just believe that what God says it is so. And he's not going to change his mind. We will change our minds but not God. Amen somebody. If our earthly fathers know how to give good gifts. What about our heavenly father who owns everything? Amen, somebody. So sometimes some people forget you. You say, Lord, look how many help that person there. Lord, look how many sacrifice and give them the last money. Lord, God, look how many sacrifice and give them the food. But that's okay. Continue doing good. You're just in your process. Remember, process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. Just a part of your process. And your process is not there to kill you. Your process is there to strengthen you, to mold you, and to make you into who God wants you to be. Enjoy your process. And you may say, prophetess, you sound crazy. I am going through my, my, my process, amen. And I'm not telling you that it's nice or I like it. But with God in it, I will endure. I'm just asking him for more of his grace and his mercy to carry me through. The process is not easy, but it's not there to kill you. Your process is not punishment, somebody. Amen. Your process is to bring you into greatness. Amen, somebody. And I do hope that you're sharing this video. Amen. You're sharing it with your family and your friends and your acquaintances. Amen, somebody. Because a lot of them may be going through a process and they don't understand what is happening with them. Now this takes me down. Amen, somebody. To when Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. Are we going down to Genesis 41? Amen, somebody. Genesis 41, verse 25 to 38. Amen. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. Amen, somebody. No. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he's about to do. Uh oh. Amen, somebody. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. Now, market people, God, and you continue to see how Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Now, there was no one else in all of the kingdom that could interpret Pharaoh's dream. I want you to listen to me carefully. Joseph was the only one who God had given the authority to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Not no astrologer, not no palm reader, none of them could do what Joseph did. I want to tell you something. That which God has invested in you, nobody can do your work but you. It doesn't matter how anointed we are. What God has anointed you to do, you will have to do that work. And God is perfecting that within you, somebody. Nobody could do what Joseph was called to do. 
When God calls you to do something, that is what you will have to do. I can't do your work that God has called you to do. Neither can you do what God has called me to do. I am not saying that I am the only person that God and I know. That would be wrong. What I am saying is when God called a particular person to do something, that is what that person will have to do. Just like God called, amen, Jonah to go warn Nineveh and Jonah tried, amen, to detour and go elsewhere. And God said, no, 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 no. You eat your ride on a boat, so let me give you even faster ride in a, in, in a wheel. Come on now, somebody. God was showing Jonah that listen to me I sent you to do something and that is what I expect you to do come on somebody so even though Joseph was going through a rough patch Joseph was the only one to interpret that I want to backtrack a little bit and I want to go back to the beginning amen somebody God knew that Pharaoh would have a dream come on or somebody body. God knew that no one in the land could interpret it but Joseph who he had laid his hand on from he was a child. Oh God almighty somebody. I don't know if you're feeling the anointing that I'm feeling right now. Oh Shakora Baba Baba Satai. I'm saying to you that the Bible said that God knew you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. Amen. That's why you're going through this process. That's why Joseph had to go through that process. Joseph had to be hated by his brethren. Joseph had to be thrown in the pit. Joseph had to be sold to the Midianites. Joseph had to be sold to Potiphar. Joseph had to go to prison. Joseph had to interpret the baker and the butler's dream. Come on, somebody, in order to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Come on somebody it was all a part of the process and the process oh God was long and hard and we would say he did not deserve it the process that you and I are going through maybe we're saying to God it is too hard God I cannot take it any longer but God is saying just stay in your process it is not punishment it is not to kill you but it's to bring purpose into being. It is to bring you into greatness. Because if Joseph didn't go through all that, he wouldn't have been able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. But it didn't stop there, somebody. Amen. Now we're getting to where the process ends. Hmm. You know, I, I want to say this to somebody and I do hope it encourages you. When you're going through the process, at times you're so lonely. You're all alone. Sometimes not even your children or your loved one is there with you. Because nobody at times understand, amen, somebody, what it is that you're going through at that time. And some will say to you, oh, it's nothing. And some will say, what you do? No, man, you must not live right. When they can't even tap in the realm of the spirit and see that, oh, God is working on you. And you are just going through something at the moment. Some, nobody will be able to see God in what you are going through. Amen, somebody. But I don't want you to get discouraged. Even if you are forgotten. I want you to just focus on God and take each day one step at a time. Don't run ahead of God. Don't try to defend yourself. Don't be caught up in an argument in anyone. Don't be caught up in gossiping. Don't be caught up in tail bearing. Just be focused on God. Now it brings me to my final point. Where it says Pharaoh promotes Joseph. Genesis 41. 31. 39 rather to 45. Just bear with me as I read it. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, 
for as much as God has through thee all this, there is none so discreet and as wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Paneh. And he gave him to wife, Asena, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of An. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. I want you to look at your situation today. I want you to look at your process today. Joseph, <laughs> come on somebody, it's promotion time. Joseph was hated because of what God was doing in his life. Do not take anything that is happening personal. Just give it to God. And I mean, I'm ministering it to you and I'm ministering it to me. Amen, somebody. Secondly, Joseph was hated because I believe his brethren saw what God was about to do in his life. And they plotted to kill him. He said, the enemy wants you dead, but the enemy can't kill you. The enemy can't kill purpose. Amen, somebody. The enemy can't kill you unless God says, you're time for dead. Because purpose must come. Joseph had to be sold. The Midianites, they had to sell Joseph. Amen. They had to sell him to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife had to tell lie on him. I don't know who is telling lie on you in this season. But come on, rejoice and be ex exceedingly glad great is your reward not just in heaven but on earth you're going to enjoy some of that blessing before you get to heaven because when we get to heaven come on somebody we don't need money and we don't need big house we need it to enjoy it down here amen you will be hated if somebody find favor you in you, you know. If the boss surely could favor in you, your co-workers will eat you. I mean, me tell you something, it's not in a family. To Lord Jesus, help me today. Somebody just pray for me. It will happen in whichever group you find yourself. You will be hated or you can be hated. But don't look at it as punishment. Just say, God, where are you in this, Lord? Just give me more of your grace. Just this week gone, I was told that I'm going through the biggest process of my life. And I need to ask God for more of his grace. And that is what I have to be doing daily. There are days I feel as if I can't make it. And I believe that this is maybe how Joseph felt when his life just changed suddenly. No explanation. He didn't know what was happening. But it was just a process to get him to where God wanted him. And God did not take that gift from Joseph. Come on. Joseph went on. Amen. And after Pharaoh promoted him, we realized when we continue to read throughout Genesis that the very people who hated Joseph and wanted him dead, his brothers, Joseph turned out to be a blessing to them because there was famine in the land and the only place that had food was Egypt. I want to tell you something. Your naysayers, 
and those who hate you and ostracize and criticize you while you're going through your process. You're going to turn around and be a blessing to them when you are positioned. Amen. Somebody, oh God Almighty, when you're positioned where God wants you, come on, somebody, whether God is going to promote you in church or in your community or in your family, in your workplace, oh God, overseas, whatever it is that God is going to do. Amen, somebody. Amen. You know the devil is a liar. I don't know who is ringing my phone at this hour. Devil is a liar. Amen. Know this, people of God, that the very people who criticized and ostracized and told all manner of lies on you and persecute you, robbed you of your blessing, robbed you of amen, somebody your peace. When promotion comes, you're going to be a blessing to them. Don't let me hear you say, oh, you know, it was hard and, and they didn't help me. Love the unlovable. Help those who didn't help you. Because it's all about God. It's all about God. It's not about any of us. And if God chooses to put us through the process, let us give him the glory. Let us give him the honor. Let us give him the praise. The devil is a liar. The internet is acting up. But the glory belongs to Jesus today, somebody. Worship with me. The glory belongs to God. He is worthy of all the praise. I'm in my process, but God is still God in my life. Amen, somebody. I have my thoughts. I have my ways like anybody else. I am not perfect, but God is in control of my life. Amen, somebody. God is in control and he is worthy to be praised. There is none like him. There's none before him. None can be compared to him. Whether I'm in the valley or I'm on the mountain top, whether we are in the fire, oh God Almighty, or we're comfortable at home, wherever place we find ourselves, God is still God. When we are going through the process, He still rules and reigns forevermore. We can talk all we want, but we must have some actions to back up our talk, you know. When I was getting ready the other day to defend myself, the Lord said, don't even defend yourself. Be still. He's working it out. And the more I'm quiet, is the more I see things unfolding. And there are those who believe that I am guilty of whatever it is I don't even know. But guess what? God remains God. And so I'm lifting the bloodstained banner eye. And I'm focusing on God. There have been many tears. Many sleepless nights. But not anymore. I'm focusing on my God. Because I know he's going to bring me out and he's going to bring me out to where I go. Same way he did it for Joseph. He's going to do it for me. Amen, somebody. Go to your process. Amen. Let me just remind you of a few points I had. Amen, somebody. Let me tell you, the process is not going to kill you. It's going just going to place you in your position amen yes indeed you see we human beings want to be positioned without being processed not nervoso not like that amen once we are being positioned we must go through a process the process is not meant to punish you but to position you purpose is found in pain can I say that again? Purpose 
is found in pain. Amen. A lot of us love to say, you know, maybe I can achieve more. Or people will like me more if I go towards this goal. And, you know, I get this and I get that. And we bury ourselves in work. And it doesn't matter the good that we do. We will still be criticized. Still be talked about. Still be lied on. Amen, somebody. But it is through the pain and the heartache that we go through while we are trying to achieve all these things. That will bring us out. Amen somebody. Purpose is found in pain. Your process is not meant to punish you. But to position you. Amen somebody. Let us trust God. While we are going through the process. The Lord gave me this message. About three weeks ago. And so I waited and he told until he told me when I was to do it. People of God, we're all going through our process, different storms in our lives. But God is still in control of our lives. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. God is not going to leave us high and dry. If God calls us to it, he's going to take us through it. If God calls us to it, he's going to qualify us to do the job that he's called us to do. Joseph was a child. Joseph did nothing wrong. So we come against every spirit that will say, it's something you must be doing wrong. When you're going through your process, the only thing you're doing is of being obedient to the will of God and not doing what the enemy wants you to do. Once you're doing the work of God, you're going to be hated. Once you're serving God the right way, you're going to be hated. Amen, somebody. So let us know that in our minds and in our hearts. And once we're calling on the name of Jesus, it's not going to be no walk in the park. Worse when God want to use us. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Just like how we get promotion in the world, in the secular world, so too we get promotion in the realm of the spirit from God. And when there's a promotion coming, you're going to go through a process. Amen. I just know that God is up to something great in my life. I, I don't know what it is. I can't say but I'm trusting God that it's going to be something great. I'm trusting God that it's going to be awesome. And I'm trusting God that he's going to give me his grace to endure to the end. Amen, somebody. God bless you all. Ride out your storm, somebody. Your joy is coming. Amen, somebody. God will not fail you. Master God of God. Amen. Somebody, I love this song so much. He said, I hear them talking. I hear them running up them out. But you're bigger than what people say. How oh, you're big, so. How oh, you're big, so. How oh, you're big, so. God, how oh, you're big, so. Listen, our God is bigger than what people say. He's bigger than our naysayers. He's truly amazing, somebody. Share this message. The more you share it, is the more you help to spread the word of God to people near and far. And I know the enemy is fighting this ministry, but he will not prevail. Amen, somebody. He will not prevail. And I will work for God till the day I die. I thank God for you all who tune in today with me. I bless the name of Jesus for you. Amen, somebody. I'm taking him out of the box. I can't, I, I can't afford to keep God in the box because he's bigger. Amen. God is bigger than our problems. 
bigger than our mountains, bigger than our giants, bigger than our failures, bigger than our needs. He's big today, so big. We can't contain him. In our processes, he's big. And he's going to bring us into greatness, somebody. God bless you. Please continue to share in the videos. Share it more than once. Amen, somebody. I love you all. Please pray me up. Pray me up. Pray up this ministry. Amen, somebody. Pray my strength, everybody, because I need you as I continue to pray for all of you as well. Amen, somebody. God bless you. May the peace of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God be upon you all and your house soul. I decree and declare the full blood coverage of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you all. I decree and declare that you all are blessed in your going out, blessed in your coming in, blessed when you lay down, blessed when you raise up, blessed, blessed, blessed wherever you go. I decree and declare that God is the head of your lives today in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the enemy will not move you will not cause your foot from falling today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth God bless you all God bless you all meet with you again next Tuesday somebody with the word of Almighty God. You can share the video more than once. Like it. Love it. Amen. Tell somebody about the word. Tell them about the process. Amen somebody. Shalom. Shalom everybody. May the peace of God rest upon you all. Like never before. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God rain down upon you all in abundance and may your store baskets never go empty I've never seen the righteous forsaken or received baking bread Shalom Shalom God bless you bless you love you all love you all God bless you peace my people God bless you